Hello, today in this video I'm going to show you a super easy way to create a table of contents in Microsoft Word. Now if you've ever created a book report, a dissertation, or any other long report for school or work, you know that creating a table of contents manually can be a real pain in the neck. The reason for that is if you, for instance, create a table of contents, I'm just scrolling down here through an example document that I'm going to work with here. I want the table of contents to be on the second page here. Uh, so I've got some headings. I've got book overview and I've got the evaluation of the book and so on and so forth. If I create this table of contents manually, well, I've got to go through the whole document and I've got to figure out where my pages are. And then if I go in and edit the document later, my page numbers are not going to match the table of contents. So what I really want to have happen here is I want to have Microsoft Word generate the table of contents for me automatically. And if I make changes to my document, and for instance, if uh, one of these headings ended up on a second page or a third page, a uh, different page it was in now, I would like the table of contents to show me that. Well, the key to having all this happen is to use styles. And the styles that we want to use are heading styles. Now, so I do have some headings here in this document, but they're not marked as headings. So if I go back to the home tab here and you look at the heading or the look at the styles, you'll see that this is based on the normal style. And normally that's what we work with here. But in order to have Microsoft Word create a table of contents for me automatically, the headings have to be based on styles, uh, heading styles. So I have a heading style here. I have heading one, I have heading two. Well, in your table of contents, the first level that you'll see in your table of contents, and we'll see that here in just a second when I generate this, is going to be heading one. If you have sublevels, they will be heading two and heading three accordingly. So what I want to do is I want to take these headings in my report and I want to mark them or indicate that they are heading styles. So I'm going to go ahead and select the text that needs to be in a heading style and I'm going to go ahead and click the heading one style. Now when I do that you'll notice that it turns with, with the default version here of Microsoft Word it kind of turns um, a, a bluish color and it's really too big. So depending on the style that your uh, boss or your professor is looking for, this will probably not do the trick here. So what I'm going to do in this case is I'm actually going to fix the style in a second. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and highlight all of the headings using the heading style. And again, it's not correct, but we're going to show you how you can easily fix that, which is another advantage to using styles. So I'm scrolling down through the document, finding all the heading style, all the headings. And you know, once I understand how to do this, I will just create the headings using the heading style as I'm typing the text. So as I type the text, I would just indicate that this is a heading right off the bat. And we're almost there here. Just bear with me here for a second to more here. Another heading style here. And uh, we've got a recommendation of the book. We want that to be in a heading style as well. Try my triple click here. OK, I have an extra page here. That just happens now and then, too. I don't want that extra page. So I'm just going to delete that extra page and bring the recommendation up here. OK, so again, I'm not happy with the way this style looks. This was the default heading style, and it didn't do it for me. Well, the cool thing about this, if you're using styles, is you can actually modify one instance of the text that uses the style, and then you can actually update the style. So for instance, let's say that uh, my style, whatever I'm using, MLA, APA, says that, OK, it needs to be bold, so we're going to bold face it. Uh, it needs to be the normal color, so I'm going to change this back to black instead of the other color that it was. It needs to be in, let's just say, Times New Roman. And it needs to be 12 font instead of the 20 that we have here. So I've made multiple changes here. <laughs> Problem is, though, as I scroll down the document here, you're going to see that did not change all of the other texts that use that particular style. So what I'm going to do now is I am simply going to tell Microsoft Word that I want you to modify the Heading 1 style so that everything that uses Heading 1, and from this point forward, when I select Heading 1, I want it to look this way. So I'm going to make sure that I'm here, have the text selected uh, with the formatting that I want for the heading style. I'm going to right click up here on the ribbon and I'm going to choose very quickly and easily after I've right clicked on the shortcut menu here, update heading one to match selection. So I click OK here. 
All right, well, you don't see anything changes, except you do see that the heading style did change. Heading 1 now looks closer to what I have here. OK, now as I scroll down the list, and again, this is one of the beautiful things about using styles, everything that used heading 1 automatically changed. So if I'm working on a dissertation that's 150 pages, every one of those has changed. Well, I'm going to go ahead and see how this works now. I want my table of contents to appear on page number 2. I've used heading styles, so if I've done this right, I can simply tell Microsoft Word to create or generate a table of contents, and it should put in every indication where there are every place where the text has a heading style, and it should give me the page number. Well, I do that through references. So I go to the References tab here, and right there at the far left, you see Table of Contents. So I click the drop-down list here. I have several different styles of the contents that I want here. I want to go ahead and use this second one that actually says Table of Contents. Notice that it shows me here in the example, Heading 1 and Heading 2 and Heading 3. Heading 2 and 3 are indented a little bit. Well, right now, I didn't use any Heading 2 styles, so you won't notice any difference here. But I'll go ahead and click on Heading 1. And there we have it. The book overview, the evaluation of the book, the book highlights, practical application, personal implications, and a recommendation. Now, really, what I want to have happen here is I would really like to have the practical application and the personal implications to be indented. Well, in order to do that without you know manually doing it and messing up this whole thing, I need to change their style. So I'm going to go ahead and find those particular phrases in the text. I can do a control click if I've generated a table of contents with Word and go right to it. Right, I'm going to go back to the Home tab. You'll see that this is Heading 1. Well, I'm going to select it and I'm going to choose Heading 2. Well, Heading 2 is not what I want. Again, I, I do need to make those changes. So I'm going to change the color to black. I'm going to italicize it. We'll assume that's what my style wants here. I'll still go ahead and um, boldface it as well. I want the Times New Roman again. And I want uh, 12 font again. So whoops, lost my Times New Roman here. Times New Roman and 12 font. OK. Now, I want to go ahead and update heading 2 so it matches this style. But when I go down to the personal implications, it's still in heading 1. So I'm going to select that text and select heading 2. OK. One more thing I'm going to do here is let's just assume that uh, the practical applications is currently now on page 9, um, or page 8 as it's going to show up in the table of contents. And let's just say I'm adding a whole lot of additional text, and now it changes pages. Instead of being on page 8, it is on page 9. Well, the cool thing about this is I just go back into that table of contents. I right click in the table of contents and I'm going to choose update field and I'm going to choose update entire table and by choosing update entire table if I had added additional text that uses the heading style that also would now show up on this table as soon as I click OK. All right so now I have it I have the book overview um, if I want to change the line spacing here depending on you know what anybody is wanting here I can go ahead and change it to whatever I wanted it to be by selecting it here. OK, so I'm happy as it is now. Again, anytime I make changes, I can just right click on it and choose update the field and update entire field. OK, styles are pretty impressive. There's a lot you can do with styles. I do want to point out one more thing here. Notice that there is not a page number on the first page, the title page, and I have the second page of the document actually appearing as page one. I will show you how to do that in an uh, additional video in which I talk about section breaks. OK, that's it for table of contents. Very, very, very easy to do if you use styles. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you do, please consider liking it. Please consider subscribing to my channel, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.